Now, ministers at the OPEC cartel of oil producing countries hold a meeting today with their allies to discuss the group's output policy. The meeting comes at a time when China's rapid easing of pandemic restrictions and the reopening of its borders is seen as increasing demand for crude, but also ahead of the implementation of a ban this Sunday on Russian refined products such as diesel. Well, joining me now, live from Paris, is Homiyun Falakshahi. He's senior commodity analyst at Kepler. Um, Homiyun, good to see you this morning. Now, the market expectation is for no change in, in production quotas. Is that your assumption too? <coughs> Hi, and thanks for having me. Yes, indeed. Um, we think this is almost a non-event uh, for the market this time. Uh, so the first thing is, you know, it's, um, it's, it's not going to be a presidential meeting. Uh, and even the technical committee was even called off because uh, apparently there was nothing new to discuss. So indeed, uh, we don't expect uh, any uh, huge um, you know, decision to be taken and any even big decision to be taken. Uh, so the impact on the market is, is going to be relatively muted, unless obviously there's, there's a big surprise, but uh, this is not expected right now. Presumably some OPEC plus members would like to start pumping more crude to cash in on Chinese demand. Yes, indeed. So um, Chinese demand is already quite strong due mostly to um, the issuance of product export quotas, meaning that refiners in China have imported a lot more recently to run these uh, these barrels and to export the products such as gasoline mostly uh, in the region. So demand is already quite high, but as you say, the domestic demand um, via mobility data, we're seeing a rebound in that. And it's not yet back to pre-pandemic levels, but it's fair to assume that later in the year it becomes the case. Uh, and so, indeed, we think that some producers will be willing to capture some of that uh, demand growth in the in in, in the second uh, largest uh, market uh, globally. And so, right now, we we see, for example, Saudi Arabia has decreased in its exports uh, last month. It could be the case that they decided to launch maintenance right now as Chinese demand. Is still not back to pre-pandemic levels, but then in a few months' time, we could expect a big rebound in, in their exports as they try to capture that. How effective do you think this ban on refined Russian produce is going to be? So we're not expecting any impact on, on Russian supply, actually. So initially, we, we thought about a month ago that um, you know, Russian supply of crude was going to decrease because of the impossibility to find markets for its diesel mostly, so leading to, to reduced use of crude internally in Russia. Um, in the end, we've changed our view. With, we, we're not as pessimistic as, as, as we were a month ago. We think that Russian diesel will still manage to find some new markets, especially in Asia and also in, in, in the Mediterranean, such as the Turkish market. So looking at uh, Europe is, is where most of the interest is because Europe is still the main importer of, of, of Russian diesel. Last month, about 60% of Russian diesel went to, to Europe. Um, we think that other producers of, of, of you know, these products would be able to, to replace uh, Russia uh, in, in the longer term. But obviously, in the short term, we could see some, some disruptions take place, meaning that uh, prices uh, of diesel mostly could be, could be impacted in the very short term. We uh, hear that Putin spoke to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman on uh, Monday. How, how close are OPEC hugging the Russians right now? Yeah, so OPEC has a very close relationship with, with Russia, and that's been the case since uh, 20, the late 2016 when uh, they, they reached a, um, an agreement to, 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 to form a group that's called OPEC+. Plus. So that includes mostly Russia as one of the top three uh, global oil producers. So in terms of business, but also in, in other uh, sectors of, 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 you know, either the economy or even the military, there's, there's, there's some agreements that have been signed over the past uh, four or five years. And so that relationship is, ex is extremely key, especially for Saudi Arabia. And as you know, Saudi Arabia has, has, has had some, some difficulty in its relationship with the US lately. So they're trying to balance that by getting slightly closer to Russia or, 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 or to China. Uh, and so this is a very important factor to keep in mind when looking at what's going to impact uh, the oil market in the next few months, but also geo global geopolitics. All right, Homie, and we have to leave it there. Good to talk to you this morning. Thank you.